anticipated review of the Naked 3 palette. Just getting started with things. I was conflicted when I saw reviews and swatches of this palette because while on the one hand it is rosy toned shadows that would look good with green eyes, which I have, um, I was also like, okay, well I don't, when do I wear pink eyeshadow? Never. So when I got this for Christmas, I was like, I hope I can create looks out of this, but it's been actually really, really easy to come up with looks with this palette, which I found was not the case with the Naked 2. I could not find a look to save my life with the Naked 2 palette, and this one is much easier to find looks with, even if you're not typically a pink eyeshadow girl, which I'm not. I've been using this a ton. It brings out green eyes, so if you have green eyes, you just got to snatch it this review, I'm going to be basically giving you an overview of the palette, and there's going to be some swatches and stuff appearing on the screen as I'm talking. Looking at the packaging, I don't exactly understand why they did the little ripple ridge thingy. It doesn't really make a difference, but it's just kind of like, why? Why? I like the font. I like how the packaging is hard. And this one doesn't seem to run into the problems my Naked 2 did with it not being able to close right. This usually closes just fine, so I'm cool with that. A large mirror, same size as the Naked 2, which is bigger than the original Naked. And so it's clear, it's not one of those cheap mirrors, you can actually see what you're doing, which is good. The brush it comes with. Ooh, the dual-ended brush is so nice. Um, I wasn't expecting it to be as nice as it is. It's... I... So it has a flat shader brush, which is a typical flat shader brush. It's nice, but that's not the part that I'm like actually freaking out about. The part that's really awesome is this blender side. And it's kind of like, it's not like a circle. You see how it has that interesting like oval shape, almost like this brush, but if it was thicker? I really like that because it creates the perfect crease shape without it being too big almost because I have that problem with circle looking blending brushes it's just the crease color goes too far up and this can work it nicely into the area you want it to work into so I love this brush. Moving on into the individual eyeshadows. This color is called Strange and it is just a matte creamy like you know off-white kind of color for your brow bone and eye swatches and it is so soft to the touch it's amazing and it blends on to your brow bone really nicely I'm wearing it today and you almost can't tell that you're even wearing eyeshadow um, I think it's good for people with veiny eyelids I have veiny eyelids and if you just use this all over as a base color it gets rid of so that. Next is the color dust which everyone seems to have a problem with <laughs> and that's because it has a ton of fallout it's a nice, like, it's not shimmery, but it's not super chunky glitter either. It's just kind of smaller glitter. It's just a really cool texture. I'm wearing it today. Um, but people have issues with it because it's fallout. It has fallout and it's not that pigmented. Um, it's more of a layering shadow, I found. I use the Maybelline Color Tattoo in Inked in Pink. And when you have that sticky base for it to adhere to, it works so much better and I know you shouldn't really have to go get another product to use with it but the Maybelline color tattoo is great anyway and it's pretty cheap so I if you really want to use that color then I would suggest using the Maybelline color tattoo especially the one in inked in pink or another cream shadow underneath then the color burnout which is a satiny finish kind of darker redder, browner, pink. And I can't really say much about this. It's just kind of, it's not like a hit or a miss. It's just kind of there. <laughs> but it's great for a lid color or an outer lid color. Limit is another matte shade. It's almost like Tease from the Naked 2, except more pink mauve brown tone, whereas that was sort of grayish plum. Um, but it's just a nice transition color, and I've really enjoyed using that in the crease and to blend. My favorite color in the palette so far is the color Buzz, because it's just so nicely pigmented, and it's just kind of this 
purpley lilac pink. It's not so pink. It still has some purple in it, which I like. Um, and I just find it's great in the outer corner. I've been wearing it in the outer outer. I just love it. I don't know. The first time I ever swatched it at Ulta, I was like, yep, this is going to be the color I love. And, it, and then Trick, I think, is a nice change of pace because it's gold in this neutrally pink category of colors, which I think is really cool how they changed it up and didn't just go with pink, 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 pink. So, also, if you put it on the inner lid, just right in that center portion where the light hits your eyelid, it looks so nice and you can create like a sunset kind of look with this gold and I really think that was a good choice for them to put in. Nooner is the next color. It is basically just a darker version of Limit, so if you wanted to use Nooner as the crease and then Limit as the transition to your brow bone and then Strange as your brow bone color, that's typically what I do. It's really, really nice and I like how they offer I guess hmm, three total matte shades in this palette as opposed to just like I guess you'd say one and a half because I can't really tell if the brow bone colors in the Naked 2 are supposed to be matte or not. They aren't really. Um, these are complete mattes, three complete mattes and I just love how they put that in there because it's really nice to have some matte options. So the color Liar is really pretty. It works really well with those darker um, matte crease colors like new. It's kind of like if you don't want to have the bright pink on your lid and you think that's a little bit much, it's a mix between a taupe and a pink. Just people in professional settings where they can't really have like crazy eye makeup, it's still a good palette to choose because of this second set of six colors from Nooner to Blackheart. You can definitely use those to create like a more taupey gray with a hint of pink sort of look, which I think is really nice. And then Factory is a dark brown brownie bronze color. It's a nice change of pace from the pinks and taupes and grays and mauves and stuff like that and I think it's a really good formula. I would just put it um, in the outer V or like smudge it onto my lower lash line. And then Mugshot is a lot like colors you would have found in the Naked 2 except, okay, it looks pretty silvery gray taupe with a hint of brown in it, but when you swatch it, a lot more brown shows through. It's a really nice formula and it would look great on the outer half of the lid or all over the lid depending on what kind of look you're going. Next is Dark Side. It's a dark, dirty gray sort of color. Almost black but not black, but not like a light gray either. Um, I'm not really in love with this color because it's not shimmery, but it's not completely matte either. But when you swatch it, it's not the greatest pigmentation, it's slightly patchy like some matte shades are, so I don't know. It doesn't have shimmer, it's not completely matte either, it's one of those like in-betweeners, it's hard to tell, and the pigmentation is not that great. So I probably won't be using this shade a ton, but still, one flop for me in 12 is fine. The color Blackheart is super interesting, because of course they put Blackout, which is just the plain black color, in the Naked 2, but this one is that with a twist. Um, it is just a black color with red glitter. It's not like a lot of red glitter packed in there. It's pretty sparse, um, but when you look at it in the pan and you swatch it on your finger, the glitter comes off a lot more than it does on the eye. Like I use this usually as um, a lower liner. Um, right under my lash line. I just kind of smudge it in there. And it's not like somebody's going to go up to you and be like, you have red glitter. Unless you really pack it. A lot of people are saying, should I get the Laura Pro or the Naked 3? And honestly, as a versatile anyone will like this palette kind of thing, I'd go with the Lorac Pro. Darker skin tones usually get better use out of the Lorac Pro. Um, people without green eyes who aren't really into rosy toned shadows as much. I would suggest Lorac Pro, Matte Eyeshadow Lovers Lorac Pro. So if you're worried that this palette is just like the Naked 1 and the Naked 2, it's not. Um, it's very, very different, but they still have those staple colors that all palettes should have, like, you know, brow bone color, darker, like, liner, smudgy colors for the lash line but it's not like the other two. It's really unique, and when I heard that there was going to be a third, and I didn't see the colors yet, I was worried. I was like, how much more can they do on the neutral scheme? And they actually managed to create a really unique palette, so 
If you're interested in these colors, I definitely would suggest getting it, but if you know you don't like them, it's okay to pass it up. And bottom line, I've got a, a lot of people, not only asking me, but asking other people, Lorac Pro or Naked 3, and honestly, I would go with the Lorac Pro because of the versatility. I'm going to be doing a separate video on the Lorac Pro review-wise and like with swatches and stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I didn't want to make it just like everybody else's review, so hopefully you got something from this. And yeah, um, leave some requests for reviews, tutorials, anything down below. I'm doing tutorials with this and probably some get ready with me's. So yeah, ready for those. And yeah, I'll see you guys later.